Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one your huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Golly, you know what that reminds me of? Why, it makes me just downright hungry for some good, thick yellow cream and fruit on a heaping bowl of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. That's what. Mm -mm, there's a special treat. You take a big spoonful, and those king-sized grains of wheat or rice, so crisp, so nut-like in flavor, taste more tempting, more scrumptious than ever when they're covered with smooth, rich cream. Try it tomorrow morning for a special treat with delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. As the Yukon Queen, one of the larger packets that carried passengers and cargo between the Yukon and the States, moved along the mighty Yukon River on its way from Selkirk to Dawson City, Sergeant Preston arose from the bunk in his cabin after a refreshing nap. It was spring of 1898, and the boat was making its first trip back to the States. As the Mountie stood up, the great dog King moved to his side and whimpered as he nuzzled his master's hand. Yes, King, I know, boy. Stuffy in here. We'll go up on deck and get some fresh air. Come on, fella. As the Mountie and dog moved slowly along the deck to the front of the boat, they approached a woman standing at the rail. Sergeant Preston was conscious of the hostile, piercing eyes that glared at him through the wide meshes of a veil. Then her steps faded rapidly along the deck. Lady seemed to resent this, King. Well, let's go back along the deck away and go on back to our cabin, boy. Come on. Two men sat in one of the cabins on the same deck. One of them was speaking. The boat will stop at Dawson City for 24 hours, Senor Barton. I know, Carlos. And in that time, we have a lot to accomplish. The Americans in Selkirk contributed much gold to the fund which was started when the recent news of the war declaration was telegraphed to the Yukon. The senor who is entrusted with this fund is aboard the ship right now, as you know. Yeah, we need to get a big addition to the fund at Dawson City. It's up to you and the senorita to get the fund from him and turn it over to me during the ship's layover in Dawson. Si, senor. I have lived the details to senorita Mendoza. Yeah, I'll see who it is at the door. I must talk to you and Carlos, senor. Oh, of course. Come in, senorita. You seem upset, Bonita. Perhaps it is nothing, Carlos. But I have just seen a monkey aboard. Uh -huh. He approached me at the rail, but I left before he could question me. Well, why should he question you? You and Carlos are both American citizens now. You've done nothing to cause suspicion. See, si, of course, Juanita. You are the great singer, Senorita Juanita Mendoza, going to feel an engagement at Dawson City, no? Because you have sung in White Horse and Selkirk, he may have recognized sure, you. Sure, that must be it. Carlos is your manager, so you're both in the clear. Well, perhaps something has made him suspect that Carlos and I, as agents of our country, are after that fund to help our cause. We both will dock at Dawson City tonight. A man, Barry Jeffers, will get the contribution to the fund and add it to what he already has. Yeah, the committee is to come to the boat after it docks to make the presentation. See, si. he is keeping the fund in a black bag in his cabin. 
That I have found out. Carlos and I have passage only to Dawson City. So we shall leave the boat when it docks and go to the hotel. How do we get the black bag containing the money? This is my plan, senors. See? Tonight, most of the men on board will go ashore for a final celebration before sailing from the Yukon. Oh. This senor Jeffers is young. He is sure to want to join them. What then? Carlos will watch from the dock and follow Senor Jeffers to see which cafe he enters. Bueno. Then Carlos will approach him and say that the great Senorita Mendoza has heard of this war fund and wishes to contribute a large sum. I don't see how that'll get us the money bank. And listen a moment. Carlos will persuade Senor Jeffers to come to my hotel suite to get the contribution. Mm -hmm. I shall ask him to drink a toast in wine to victory for his country. He will not refuse. The wine will be drugged. But the fun will be on board, Juanita, locked in his cabin. He will have the key with him. You, Carlos, shall take it to the dock where Senor Barton will meet you. Give him the key to this Barry Jeffers cabin. Mm, that'll work until he comes to and tells the police about <laughs> it. <laughs> but I am not stupid, Senor. You are to remove all his belongings from his cabin to yours, which is only a few doors away. Also, you will take the black bag. And when Jeffers returns to the boat? He will not return, senor. Hmm? Nor will he be seen again. Carlos will see to that. <laughs> Why, when it is discovered he is not aboard and that his belongings are missing along with the fund, people will think he has run off with the money. Of course. Tomorrow night, after the boat sails, you can drop his personal belongings overboard, senor Parson. Uh, uh, uh. You see, senor, the senorita is most clever. You will be in the clear, and no one will ever suspect us. See, si. uh, we shall not meet again, senor Barton. So I wish you good luck and success to our plan. It was about 8 o'clock that night when the Yukon Queen eased alongside the dock at Dawson City. Sergeant Preston, with King at his side, stood at the rail watching as the boat was made secure. He turned as someone spoke at his side. Hi, Sergeant. Come on, Barry Jeffers. I haven't seen you since you came aboard at Selkirk. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time below decks with a crowd of fellows going to join up in the States. I admire the loyalty of you Americans, Barry. None of you would be forced to go back for service. You'd do the same if you were somewhere else in your country declared war. Yes, that's true. I heard about the big fund of money the American prospectors have raised, too. Yes, they've... Uh trusted me to take it to the States. In my opinion, they couldn't have trusted it to a better man. I hope you put it in the ship safe, Barry. As a matter of fact, I haven't. I intend to turn it over to the purser as soon as I receive the sum of money the Dawson crowd has waiting for me. I'm going ashore to see about it now. I'll see you later, Sergeant. So long. So long, Barry. Bye, King. Well, King, the gangplank's down. We might as well be going. Come on, fella. About an hour later, Barry Jeffers was in the Nugget Cafe when Carlos approached and spoke to him. Senor Jeffers? What? Oh, yes, I'm Barry Jeffers. I have come with a very important message. If I may speak to you alone, perhaps? Why, sure. Let's go back there, hold and talk. I guess we're sort of away from the crowd now. Yeah. I am business manager for the great singer, Senorita Mendoza. Oh, yeah. Is that right? I heard her sing in Selkirk. Oh, si, senor. The senorita has arrived here in Dawson to sing at the Opera House starting tomorrow. Oh, I'd like to hear her again, but I'm booked to leave on the Yukon Queen. But, uh... Why have you come to... Or the senorita, she has heard the fun what that has been entrusted to you, senor. Oh? She is a citizen of your country, as am I. And she wishes to show her loyalty by contributing to the fund. Gosh, that's mighty fine of her. She has asked that you come with me to her hotel suite so that she may give the money to you in person. Well, sure. It'll be an honor to meet the great senorita. I was getting ready to leave anyway. Let's go. A short time later, Barry sat rather uncomfortably in Juanita Mendoza's suite. He was flattered by the attention that the celebrated singer and her manager gave him. Oh, Carlos has brought wine, Senor Jeffers. 
We must make a toast to victory for the United States, no? Oh, sure. Here is your wine, senor. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> now I give you victory, senor Barry. To victory. Thanks for calling me Barry, senorita. <laughs> but of course, why not? Oh, such a young and handsome soldier you will make. <laughs> oh. Carlos, we must also have a toast to Barry's safe return from the war, no? Oh, so I guess I can't refuse that. And then, senor, we must give a toast to the senorita's success during her engagement here in Dawson at the Opera House, no? Of course. <laughs> Let's drink it. Within a short time, the drugged wine had its effect, and Barry Jeffers finally dropped into a deep sleep. Moving him onto the sofa, Carlos quickly searched him. Ah, so, I have found the key to his cabin on the boat, Juanita. I see, that is fine, Carlos. I will sleep for hours. Hurry, go give the key to Senor Barton, then come back here. I have already made plans for Senor Jeffers' disposal. Mm -hmm. What sort of plans, Juanita? One of our countrymen, Pedro, has a fishing boat on the river not far from here. I sent the word for him to bring a wagon to the back door of the hotel within the hour. Oh, you will help him get the young senor to the fishing boat. Si, si. Pedro will move the boat out into the river. Then together you can push senor Jeffers into the water. Oh, oh, you plan everything very well, Juanita. I will go meet Barton right now and give him this key. Later, returning to the hotel suite, Carlos entered to find the man Pedro waiting. So, Carlos, it did not take you long. No. I delivered the key, and Senor Barton went aboard to remove Jeffers' belongings and to get the money box. Uh, Carlos, this is Pedro. Commissar, you will bring the wagon, Pedro? See, si. it is just outside, behind the hotel. Good. Oh, I see Senor Jeffers <laughs> is still in a deep sleep. See, si, and he will stay that way until you throw him into the river. Now, you and Pedro take him out the back way and get him to the fishing boat. My... <laughs> Instead of being praised as the patriot going off to the war, the Senor Barry Jeffers will be despised as a thief who disappeared with the fund. See, they will say he betrayed his trust. Yes, and all the time he will be at the bottom of the river, dead. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. <laughs> Say, tomorrow morning, you'll go for this family breakfast treat. Crisp, tender, swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. The ready-to-serve cereal shot from gun. Hey, hold on there, man. What's going on here? Hey, who are you? Hey, what's all the shooting about? Oh, me? Your name's Lou. Lumberjack Lou. Oh? Why, everybody from White Horse to Dawson knows me. Been knocking around logging camps in these parts for years. I see. What brings you here? I just figured to look around, get me some supplies, and head back to camp. Then I heard all this ruckus. Well, Lou, that shooting you heard now was just me explaining about the keenest tasting breakfast ever. Oh? Namely, rice or wheat shot from gun. Huh? You see, we load huge guns with choice, sun-ripened premium grains of rice or wheat. Then these guns are exploded. Out come big, giant grains, eight times normal size. They're magnified, crispified. Shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. That's why Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are so good to eat. Well, doggone. And for breakfast, lunch, or supper, all you do is pour out a bowl full right from the package. No cooking. Just add milk or cream and top with your favorite fruit. That's for me. And what's more, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are nourishing. They furnish added health values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Hey, look, man, where do I get me a couple of packages of this here rice and wheat shot from guns? At the nearest grocery store. And fellas and girls, here's a tip for you, too. Tell Mom delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat is never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh rice or wheat shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Now.
now to continue. Barry Jeffers had been drugged and his cabin key taken and delivered to Mr. Barton at the boat. Then Carlos returned to the hotel and found Pedro waiting to help him take Barry to the fishing boat from which he was to be dumped into the river. Meantime, Sergeant Preston had gone to the constable's office and was talking to the constable. The Spanish-American war is causing quite a bit of excitement among the Americans up here, Dave. I know. Some of them are leaving for the States to join the army. Barry Jeffers from Selkirk's on his way to join. Those who aren't going back are sending quite a large sum of money in Barry's care as a contribution to the cause. I heard about that, Sergeant. My wife's an American, you know, and she wanted me to ask you if it'd be all right for her to contribute something. Well, I don't know of any objections, Dave. Well, I have the money here in an envelope. Huh? I want to get it to Barry before the boat sails. Well, I'll take it to him tonight if you want me to. King and I are going that way. Oh, say, that's fine. Here it is. All right. Barry was seen leaving the Nugget Cafe a while ago with another fellow. I guess he's back on board by now. Good night, Dave. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Sergeant. Come on, King. <laughs> Taking King aboard the boat with him, Sergeant Preston was told the number and location of Barry's cabin. Within a short time, he stood knocking on the cabin door. Just as he was about to turn away, Sergeant Preston saw the cabin door key in the keyhole. That's strange, King. The key's on the outside of the lock. Thinking that perhaps Barry had unlocked the door and had gone inside, forgetting to take the key with him, Preston opened the door and entered the cabin. One king. Oh, a lamp's lighted, fellow, but... Uh-oh. Belongings are gone from the cabin. Come on, King. We'll see if we can find Barry Jeffers. Sergeant Preston and King headed for the Nugget Cafe. In front of the cafe, King stopped and stood whimpering. For a moment, the great dog hesitated, and then he turned and headed down the street. A short time later, in the hotel, King stood in front of Senorita Mendoza's door. He looked at Preston and whined. So you think he went into this room, eh, fella? Well, he's never failed me yet. We'll see if he's there now. See, Hermante, what is it you want, senor? You seem startled, senorita. I'm looking for a friend of mine. There is no friend of yours here, senor. I'm beginning to believe that. I do not understand. Forget it. You going to invite me in, senorita? Relax. But of course, why not? But the dog... King won't hurt you. Come on, fella. <laughs> now that you are here, senor Monty, you can see for yourself there is no one else here. Mind if I look around? No, go right ahead, senor. But remember, I consider this an intrusion. Yes, I'll remember. Sergeant Preston quickly looked through the suite. Then, returning to the living room, he saw Senorita Mendoza looking at him with an amused smile as she sat holding a wine glass in her hand. <laughs> now that you have discovered I am not hiding any of your friends, senor, perhaps you will join me in having a glass of wine, no? No, thank you. For a moment, Preston stood watching King. The intelligent dog was near the sofa, and the way he acted told the Mountie that Barry had been there. Preston spoke sharply to the senorita. What do you know about Barry Jeffers? Barry Jeffers? Who is this Barry Jeffers, senor? I'm sorry. Guess I was mistaken. <laughs> I accept your apology, sir. I uh, won't take up any more of your time. But there is no need to hurry away. I am beginning to enjoy your company, senor. Thanks. If you sing at the opera house, I'll get there to hear you. <laughs> you say, if, senor... But you should say when. I start my engagement there tomorrow. As I said before, I'll see you again. Right now I have to leave. Good night, senorita. Buenas noches, senor. Come along, King. <laughs> I'll find him, fellow. Find her. King led Sergeant Preston along the hallway and out the back door of the hotel. St. <laughs> oh, Mark's of Wagon Wheel. Come on, King. We'll get my horse and stop by for the constable. It's a very A short time later, Sergeant Preston and the constable, followed by King, rode their horses along the trail left by the wagon. Meantime, Carlos and Pedro had driven the wagon, carrying the unconscious form of Barry Jeffers, along the river trail for about two miles, until they came to the small dock where Pedro's fishing boat was tied up. 
The two men carried Barry to the small fishing boat and stretched him out on the deck. Then Pedro started the motor after casting off the lines that held the boat. Now we will go out into the river a little way, Carlos. Then we will dump him overboard into the water. Mm, I'll be glad to get this over with. I am beginning to feel the cold. Get the boat moving, Pedro. Meantime, a short distance down the river trail, Sergeant Preston and the constable rode along behind Keene. They rode in silence until the sound of a chugging motor reached their ears. Sounds like a boat, Dave. Must be right around that bend ahead. You think it has anything to do with the case? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. Get up, Blackie. Come on. Help, Dave. Help. On Pedro's old fishing boat, Carlos stood impatiently, waiting for them to reach a deeper place in the river. Can this old tub move any faster, Pedro? <laughs> it is moving fast enough, Carlos. Do not be impatient. Uh, oh Wait, boy. Pedro. The senor is coming too. We must get this over before we find out what we are doing. Uh, this is far enough from the shore. I shall stop the motor now. Oh, my head. I'm so... Let us dump him over the side now. Gee, let's go. It will be a pleasure, Pedro. The two Maulies arrived at the old dock just as the chugging of the boat stopped. They could see it about 200 feet from the shore. Hold, Lucky. Hold it up. Easy. There's the wagon. The boat stopped out there. That's Barry. Can't do much to help him. They have that motor-driven boat. Maybe I can trick them. Senores! Senores, Wait! The senorita, she said me to you. Hey, who are you? Why have you come to find us? The plans, they are changed, senor. This note I am to give to you. Do not do what you plan until you read it. Come into the dark, senores. Quiet, quiet, boy. We better keep in the shadows so they can't see us. Yes. Do you think they'll come in? I don't know. They're talking it over. We are coming into the dark, senor. Bueno. Good. Better have our guns ready. Yes. Senor, we will come right out. Let's get that robot, Dave. Come on, King. Grab an oar, Dave. King. Got it. Lie down. Lie down. On the fishing boat, Carlos and Pedro watched intently as the rowboat put out toward them. Barry, still weak and dizzy, sat on the deck between them. Carlos. Those two hombres in the rowboat I do not like. Ah, the hombre who has caught was assured to be one of us, Pedro. He has mentioned the senorita and our plans. See, that is true, but I Wait, do Pedro, look. I can see their outlines clearly. Caramba, Montes. Help! Help! Somehow we have been tricked, Pedro. Oh, quick, throw this one overboard. Quick, no. Then try the motor while I shoot at them. Grab him! See, oh, shut no. over the other side, away no. from them! No! Oh. Oh. Swimming valiantly, the great dog king headed for the struggling man in the water. Quick, Pedro, get the boat started. At the same time, Preston swung the rowboat so as to get on the other side of the fishing boat. Meantime, Pedro tried to start the motor again. Oh, it will not start. Never mind, help me fight them off with our guns. Quickly! There, perhaps we have hit them. Of the gun, there he is! Oh! As Carlos cried out in pain, Pedro turned and ran down into the small cabin of the fishing boat, slamming the door behind him. Get Barry out, David. King's pulling him up. Right, Sergeant. Well, in a few minutes, the two Mounties are pulling Barry and King from the cold waters of the river. That's it, fella. We've got it. Putting his coat around the shivering Barry, Preston steered the rowboat alongside the fishing smack. Then, lifting King up to the deck, he pulled himself up. There's the one we wounded, fella. Please, senor, I am hurt bad. You'll live. Come up on deck, Dave. Right there. Well... That one's out of the fight. Watch him, Dave. Okay. You know, see about the other one. Come on, gang. Better give up, you. You can't get away. Good thing we went directly in front of that door, fella. But that does it. Let's get him, gang. With gun in hand, Sergeant Preston quickly kicked the small door open. And like a flash, King shrieked in. Oh, get him off! Help! Come, gang. All right. Watch him, boy. All right, you. Come out on deck. Come on, gang. That's that finished, Sergeant. Yes, I'll tie them up while you bring Barry Jeffers aboard and make him comfortable in the cabin. I can get the motors started and we're ready to travel. 
Let's get busy. All right. After getting Barry and the two crooks back to town, the Mounties got the whole story, implicating the senorita and the other agent, Barton. A surprise visit to Barton's cabin on the Yukon Queen caught him off guard, and the money bag was retrieved and put in the ship's safe. Later, in Barry's cabin, Preston was saying, Well, Barry, you had a narrow escape. That's right, Sergeant. I didn't expect to find foreign agents working here in the Yukon. And they're all in jail, including the senorita. You didn't get back to put that fund in the ship's safe, as I suggested, Barry. No, I, I didn't. The committee met me on the dock, but they left the Dawson contribution uptown in their office. I went with them and got it, then stopped to say goodbye to a few friends and met Carlos. You know the rest. Fortunately, the contribution was in paper money in an envelope which I'd put in the inside pocket of my parka. I see. And when Carlos searched you for your key, he didn't realize he'd overlooked that cash. That's right, sir. Well, all the money's in the ship's safe now. Yes, and the crooks are in jail. Are they held as spies? Why, no, Barry. They're in a neutral country. But we are holding them for robbery and attempted murder. When you signed up for the service, I'll bet you didn't expect to mix with the enemy so soon, <laughs> did you? Gosh, no. I thought I'd meet them soon enough after I signed up with Colonel Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. I'm sure glad you got wise that something was wrong. So am I. Strangely enough, it was a patriotic gesture on the part of the constable's American wife that started me on your trail. I'm as glad as you are, Barry, that this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Picture yourself up there in the Yukon with Sergeant Preston slugging it out with desperados with your bare fists. Ooh. Think of Sergeant Preston's great strength and stamina and the strength you would need in those fights. Then ask yourself this question. Am I eating a good bodybuilding breakfast every morning? Remember, when you include Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, you get added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And what a delicious way to get such good nourishment. There's tempting nut-like flavor and tender crispness in every mouth-watering spoonful, topped with milk or cream and fruit. Try it tomorrow. They're always a treat. Quaker puffed rice and Quaker popped wheat. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Red Devil. Buckland had killed a trader and a mission priest and made his escape across the frozen stretches of Mackenzie Bay. When King and I caught up with him, he had taken shelter in an Eskimo village and had convinced the Eskimos that I was an evil spirit who had driven the seal from their hunting grounds. As a result, we not only had to face Buckland's guns, but the deadly spears of the Eskimos. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat... And Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats, because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J.J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.